Welcome back. The city to see Avon Otokaro River Park concept was the second most popular proposal on the EvoSpace website during the public consultation last year. But it was pipped at the post by the idea for an eastern cycle and walkway network running throughout the entire length and breadth of the residential red zone. The red zone goes from the, the, the sea, it goes through the eastern suburbs and it goes, ends up in the central city. There is huge potential to have a, an active transport corridor along, along the riverbank, potentially both sides of it, where people can walk and cycle, push buggies, mountain bike, etc. We know that walking and cycling is a really good thing to do. It's really good for ex physical activity, for exercise, for hearts. And it's really good for community and people chatting to each other and engaging with each other. I think this idea, if you look economically, you, for every dollar you invest, you get somewhere. The, the researchers said you're getting $8 of benefit, and it's probably greater for this one. And secondly, it's a thing that everyone can use. It's not just a local thing, which I think was really important anyway, but actually the whole city can use it. They can all come out on the weekend. But local people can use it to get to every day. So I think it has huge benefit for everyone, and it's hugely economically beneficial. There's no reason why business people going to work in the city shouldn't cycle to work on it. It'll be fabulous for kids because it'll be such a safe environment and really interesting. There's so many interesting things they'll be able to look at the wildlife, look at the, the, you know, the greenery. So it can also appeal to, to people on skateboards and rollerblades and scooters. But we also want it to link in with key destinations. So we then, once we've got this in, we need to make sure that you can actually get to the schools and, and, the, and the, the shops, etc., where people want to go. And we really want it to link to the, the bus network. So at certain points, we want good places for parking bikes that people can pass leave their bikes and jump on a bus. But then there's also people just out recreationally cycling, so they want to cycle out to the beach. And they probably want the same sort of corridor, but perhaps are less interested in directness. And then there's people mountain biking who actually want it a bit rougher. And we've potentially got a mixture of all of these. I think mums and dads pushing their buggies. I think older people who go on their, their walks during the week, because there's a decent length of active transport corridor. So to me, it'll be a fabulous resource for people of all ages. And it's part of the major cycleways program for the, the, the city council are pushing forward. So it is one of the major cycleways in there. So it's been budgeted, it's part of the, the system and it's looking really exciting. Another group of people have been working with local schools on walking trails that connect the river corridor with their neighbourhoods, called the Awa Trails. It's a series of wellbeing walking trails really, um, which will connect up all of the what we call the Awa area, Awa standing for Avondale, Wainuanui and Aranui. And so we'll create one map combining all the trails. So health promoters with CDHB working with community groups and working with the schools we're looking at how we could um, increase physical activity for our communities. The trails actually link up places of significance for each school community who've created these maps, places that they think are significant, increasing connections between neighbourhoods, increasing connections between what's over the other side of uh, Wainuanui Road and what's on this side. So families can get a better sense of the whole picture um, also, um, us all increasing our connections with the land and also increasing the connections with the river. And of course, Awa means river in Māori. Today we're going to talk about the designs for the Awa Trail. Um, they will be going around basically all of Aranui. There were a couple of ideas, but both were to incorporate the Whakatauki or the proverb of, of the Harakeke the fibre of flax, the fibre of people, and the suggestion behind that, that it's the real inner strength. I really like this one because it's how it's been around, it's like the community around Aranui. It's a trail that's going to ho hopefully connect the community and start talking to each other and to be more connected. I think stronger connections are good for us. Stronger connections between schools, between communities, between neighbours, with our land, with where we live. Also building those connections a little bit broader than just our own little patch, it's good for our soul. We go to other schools and we talk about our project and what we do in the community. Celebrating communities old and new is one of the core values of Healthy Christchurch and the Avon Otakaro network. Here Evan Smith of Avon explains. As somebody that was red zoned initially and was part of a community that disintegrated, I think it's really important to celebrate those communities. Communities that gather around the rivers on the 22nd of February um, already demonstrate there's an enormous um, amount of interest in, in 
uh, remembering those communities, what they were, and celebrating this, this community in general, and how important that is for people, and the importance of, of connecting people together and connect, connecting communities together. In conjunction with that, there's uh, other projects that celebrate the migrant communities that are now uh, in multicultural Christchurch, and one of the projects that's come out of that is um, places in tr of tranquility, which are based around um, the cultures of the various continents that are now represented in Christchurch fits in very well with the network of walkways and cycleways and it's about um, connecting communities past and future and present. The importance of community hubs in connecting communities cannot be overemphasised. Out of the heartache of the closure of Phillipstown School, something really positive arose. Here's the heartwarming story of the Phillipstown hub. The community centre started from um, a group of local people living in Phillipstown. They wanted just a place to meet. A building was put over on the north side of the school grounds and there was a three-way agreement between Ministry of Education, um, City Council and the Phillipstown Community Centre Charitable Trust and that's been running for about 18 years. After the earthquakes in particular we started doing surveys with residents of the area and it came out of that that people needed a local place where they can come together. So when the opportunity for the school came up um, to come in here and run the hub for a while, um, we grabbed at it. The school used to provide that for the community. It was a place where they would come and see other people in their community, have a chat at the school gate when they were dropping their children off. Or once the school was removed from the equation, that left a gap and it was really important that that was filled and the community said that they wanted to have something here for, for that purpose and that's what they've got, they've got the hub. The groups that work from here and the groups that, that use this space are providing really valuable services to the local community. In May we had our open day here and the former principal of Phillipstown School attended that and spoke and said for him it was a really positive thing to come and see the school being used and mm. the spirit of Phillipstown School is still here while the buildings are being used in a positive way. But I think if we can get the momentum going, whether or not the Ministry allows us to stay on this site there will still be enough groundswell for us to continue the hub. In a low socioeconomic area, if you build resilience into the community, then that impacts on the whole city. That's got to be good for the community, it's got to be good for Christchurch. Connected communities are healthy, resilient communities. Schools play a critical role in this and it's only when the schools close that we become acutely aware of how critical they are. Coming up, we explore the massive changes in the delivery of education in the East and what that will mean for the communities.